We're going to continue in our series entitled Redeemed. If you would, turn to Galatians chapter 3. Verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith, are children of Abraham. Abraham lived by faith. It said he believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. God made him righteous. Well, when you get into scriptures, you realize there's only one way to be righteous. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, being justified or being made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Break that down, it said, being righteous by faith through Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can be righteous. So how was Abraham righteous thousands of years ago? It was because by faith he looked to Christ to come. He looked to the Messiah to come. Just like we look to the Christ that has already come. The Messiah that's already come. And He's coming again. The only way you can be righteous is by faith in Jesus Christ. No other way. If you think there's another way, no, that's another righteousness. It's called self-righteousness. Only possible way to be righteous is identifying with Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 13, 14. Put on your righteousness. You've got to put it on every day. You've got to get that head lined up. Amen? You could wake up in the morning and had a bad night, wake up with a headache. You better put on the Lord Jesus because it's not going to get any better if you don't. Not going to get any better at all. Well, since we're of faith, then we're children of Abraham. Why is that? Because Christ is Abraham's seed. Jump down to verse 16. It says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say to seeds as a many, but as of one to your seed, who is Christ. Christ is the seed that's being spoken of when the word is saying Abraham's seed. Now jump down to verse 29. It says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Do we belong to Christ? Amen. Amen. If you do, then you're heirs according to the promise. Which means you're in the same family and you get the same inheritance. That's strong right there. What is the inheritance? The blessing. It's everything that pertains to life and godliness. 2 Peter 1.3 it's all the spiritual blessings that He's already given us in heavenly places manifesting in this earth right now. Ephesians 1, 3. The blessing is the Holy Spirit. The blessing is the mystery of Christ. Him being in us, we being in Him. The mystery that was always talked about. And then it came out in Colossians 1, I think 26, 27. Christ is the hope of glory. The mystery. Praise God. Jump back up to verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify or make right the Gentiles or the heathen by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. Did you notice that Abraham heard the gospel? See, I I didn't write this. He only thought the gospel was the New Testament. No, he heard it way back then. 
And did you notice what this verse said the gospel is? The blessing. The gospel. The good news is the blessing. And this blessing is not only who Jesus is, but what he did. First off, what did he do? He set you free, didn't he? He set you free from all the mess down here. In the blessing, He gave you deliverance. In this blessing, He gave you healing. In this blessing, He gave you provision. In this blessing, He gave you peace. Well, you say, I thought the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I just said all that. I just said all that. See, we've been religiously brainwashed. We look at it from a religious view, and we see what Jesus did, and we say, oh, that's wonderful. No, this is a, this is a practical application view. Did he hang on the cross only to get us to heaven when we die? To get heaven down here. That's why he said, declare my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6.10. What would that be down here? Deliverance, healing, provision, peace. You could go on and on and on. I just, I just picked four wonderful qualities or characteristics of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ is our deliverer. Jehovah Palette. Christ is our healer. Jehovah Rapha. It's his nature. It's his characteristics. Christ is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. See, this is bigger than what most people think. Provision is his nature. It's his name. Jehovah Rapha. That's his nature. That's his name. He not only has healing for you, he is your healing. When you get healed, you got the presence of God on you. I like that. He is your peace. Jehovah Shalom. That's everything you need right there. We could have just said that and forget the rest of them. We covered them all. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Peace. Peace to a man that got a bad news at the doctor's office is when he went back in. And got a good report. Peace. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Peace. Peace to a man that can't pay a bill or a note or something. All of a sudden, you know, somebody helped him out and the bills pay. Peace. Peace goes in every area of your life. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Well, I I thought it was what Jesus did in his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection. That's what I said. He did all this. So we're breaking through religion. Are are you seeing that? So you say the gospel. What is the gospel? Jesus came, died on this earth, took your sins. So when you die, you go to heaven. The gospel. Yes, that's the gospel. Can we elaborate just a little bit? Amen? Amen. Because that that doesn't give me anything except assurance to know when I finally leave this planet, I'm going home to heaven. And that does Jesus a disservice because He didn't shed His blood just to get you to heaven when you die. He shed His blood to get heaven in your life while you're living. And then I say, bless God. I'm going to get everything that Jesus shed His blood to give me while I'm down here. And no devil, no demon, no unbelieving believer, no confused relative will get in my way. Praise the Lord. I'm very dogged on this stuff. My Bible says, What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, whom you have a God and you're not your own, you're brought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, 
with your God. I'm going to glorify God in my body and to glorify God in this temple that I'm stewarding. It means it's going to be healed and healthy till the day I say, okay, I guess my work's over, take me home. Amen. Period. Amen. I'm glorifying God in this body. I'm honoring Him in this body. I'm not taking the pains. I'm not taking the aches. I'm not taking the attacks. I won't have it because it doesn't bring Him glory. And then don't let the devil get you in condemnation and guilt because you're dealing with this stuff. Uh, Y'all got to understand something. We all get attacked. We all get symptoms. We're not denying symptoms. We're denying the symptoms right in our body. Total different. I got symptoms in my body right now that I refuse to allow to be in my body. Not going to have it. Why? Because Jesus shed His blood for me on the cross so I could live healed and healthy on this planet. I'm going to bring glory to God in this physical body, this temple He told me to steward. That was 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Praise God. Everything He did in His crucifixion, death, and resurrection is the gospel. It is the good news of the blessing. Through His substitutionary sacrifice, He took our place and paid for our sin... Amen? Amen. So we could be in His place and be blessed. Did He take our sin so we had to take our sin? Did He take our sin so we have to pay for the effects of sin? No. He took our sin so we could be in His place and be blessed. I don't have to have any effects of sin. None. What's that? Oh, you know what it is. It's the curse. You got a pain in your body right now? That's the effects. That's the effects of sin. That's the curse of the law. I'm not putting up with it. You're being attacked. Attack back. Why don't you get a little out there? Why don't you come with me? It's fun. Amen. I like being healthy. For some reason, I'm getting older and older. I like being healthy as I get older and older. Praise God. Something going haywire in this temple that I'm stewarding? I come against it. I tell you what, God created this body. He created this human system, this structure that I'm in. He created it. If He can create it, He can repair it. Repairing it has to be a little easier than creating it. What do you think? Why are you saying all this? Because I want you to know how much you are redeemed. You are redeemed. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. He became sin with our sin so we could be made righteous with His righteousness. It's not right for the righteous to be cursed. It's not just. Well, you know, you said that last week, Brother Chris, and I mean, it all sounds, you know, fine and dandy, but how does that help me? You've got to apply it. You've got to apply it. When the devil comes your way, you got to come right back at him, chapter and verse. Hit him between the eyes and run him off. You know, the devil is going to do to you any and everything that you let him do. Well, I thought Jesus took care of them. Yeah, yeah. 1 John 3, 8, he destroyed the works of the devil. That right there takes care of it right there. He defeated him on the cross. He took all the power and authority from him. But why is the devil coming at me? He's going to do to you any and everything you let him do to you. 
Well, you know, I've been waking up lately with headaches. I don't know what's going on. Would you like my opinion on it? On it? It's called a curse. Attack back. You're the redeemed. You've been set free from that mess. Well, now I want to know what else is it. Okay, well, you just go intellectual then. I'm going to go spiritual. You know, this has been working for me a lot of years. It really does work. But you've got to get dogged about it. We're behind enemy lines, and the leader of the enemies is the devil. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he is the little G God of this world. And you think He's just going to hand you over everything that Jesus shed His blood to give you without giving you any kind of resistance? Well, you got to be the resistance. you got to get a rebel heart in you and you're not taking anything from the status quo down here. I'm not taking it. Not taking it. I know my rights in Christ. I know what Jesus did on that cross. And when stuff comes in my life, that's not God and I'm not taking it. Amen. I'm not putting up with it. It says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God and, he'll flee, and resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Well, how come he's not fleeing from me? Are you submitting yourself to God? If you're not submitting yourself to God, you're submitting yourself to the devil, and then you're resisting the devil. You're running with the devil, resisting the devil? He won't run from you if you don't resist him. You've got to submit to God first, and then resist him, and he'll flee from you. So my answer to that all the time is, well, how come he's not fleeing from me? You're not submitting to God. Well, it can't be that cut and dry. Well, deal with the author. I'm just a messenger, amen? You can do whatever you want with James 4, 7. I'm going to use it. I'm going to apply it. I'm going to get another victory. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Being righteous. Did you know you're righteous? Are you righteous? Amen. You don't have any unrighteousness in your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. When I say that, you say, well, I don't know about that. No, 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 no. Are you looking at you or looking at Him? Are you looking at you or looking at Him? So you don't have any unrighteousness in your life. Amen? Amen? But if I think I do, I'm looking to me. And you, you just voided out all righteousness. Now you're going to self-righteousness. Y'all stay with me on this, because we're, we're rolling right now. This, a lot of this is not in the notes already. <laughs> the devil don't want you to know what righteousness does for you. Because when you know you're the righteousness of God in Christ, you're just as righteous as Jesus is. Verse 9. So then those who are of faith, are you of faith? Amen? Amen. Are blessed with believing Abraham. So if we're of faith, then we're blessed with him, and we're as blessed as he was. Was he blessed? Richest man on the planet at the time. Well, you're that blessed too. Where is it? You got to believe it before you see it. Amen? Amen. You got to go after it. When things aren't right in your life, you got to come against it and say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm of the seed of Abraham. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ is the seed, and I got my faith in Christ, so I'm in the same family. I get the same inheritance. And I'm not letting up on that at all. It's a good word. Verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified or or made righteous by the law in the sight of God is evident. 
for the just or the righteous shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. If you're of the works of the law, you're under the curse. If you're trying to do anything in your own ability, you're under the curse. Period. That's what that just said. Why is that? Because you're trying to keep the law in your strength. You can't do it. But if you're of faith, or how many in here are of faith? Amen? Amen. Amen? This is audience participation night. Have you noticed yet? Okay. How many of faith? Amen? Amen? Praise God. Then you're under the blessing. Everywhere you go, you're blessed. Amen? You're blessed coming in. Blessed going out. Everything you put your hands to do is blessed. That's Deuteronomy 28. But if you're of faith, you're under the, you're under the blessing because you keep, you're keeping the law in Christ's strength. What if I mess up? You're under grace. You still don't get cursed. That was better than one Amen. What if you mess up? What if you what what if you you identify with Christ, then you then you go sideways and you get in your own strength, you repent and get back over, and no curses come in your way. Amen. Curse cannot come on the blessed. Amen. Now we're not talking about the, the weekend Christians that find the shortest church service on Sunday to go to so they can head to the beach. We're we're talking about the serious folks. Amen? Amen. If, you don't, if you don't get serious about this, the curse will come your way and say, well, yeah, I deserve it. You know what? You know, I've only been to church two times out of the last three months. I deserve it. Well, you self-righteous cuss you. Why do you say it that way? Because that's where you're at. Are you, are you going to earn some brownie points by getting, going to church with God? Well, I'm going to bless Ivana because she's been here every week for the last six months. But Kelly, she's only been here four times. So I'm going to penalize Kelly. Does that sound like, does that sound like God? No. Yeah, and religion. You've got to get your head out of that. We're not cursed. We're blessed. Amen. <laughs> Verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Did you notice it didn't say Christ is going to redeem us? He has redeemed us. But if you're a student of the Word, you'll find other scriptures that were waiting for the day of redemption. What is that? When you get your glorified body, when you get your heaven suit, that means you won't have your earth suit. That means you'll be headed up and enjoy in heaven. That's the full redemption. But what is this about now? We've been redeemed from the curse of the law, meaning we've been set free from all the curse on this planet. All of it. Every bit of it. What is that saying, Brother Chris? It sounds like heaven on earth. Boy, that's good. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, the heathen, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We've been set free. We have been already set free. Free Amen. Amen. from all curses. That's past tense. It's already a done deal. We're not trying to get redeemed. We are the redeemed. Amen. We are the ones that are free. Christ has already paid the price to free us. He took the curse so we don't ever have to take 
the curse again. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for our sakes He became poor, that we through His poverty might be made rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Substitution and identification. That's what the whole Bible's about. He took your place so you could be in His place. He took your place in being poor in every area of your life so you could get in His place and be rich in every area of your life. Praise God. Boy, that's good. That's what He did for us. So when the devil wants to come knocking on your door and try to rob you of the blessing, don't let him take it. What can the devil do to me, Brother Chris? Anything you let him do. Anything. Well, I'm really tired of this ache in my body. Okay, are you tired enough to come against it? Or are you just going to keep complaining? Praise the Lord. (laughs) Come against it. I did, but it came against me again. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. What's the hold up, Brother Chris? Your head. Your doubt. Your unbelief. You got the faith of the Son of God, Galatians 2.20. He gave you the measure of faith, Romans 12.3. The author... And finisher of your faith is in your heart. We don't have a faith problem. We got an unbelief problem. We have a doubt problem. Jesus took sickness, disease, lack, poverty. He took depression, discouragement. So you wouldn't have to have any of that. He took your place in all that so you could take His place in all the blessings. Amen? Amen. Jump over to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Powerful chapter. The whole chapter is. I mean, I'm not even looking at it in my notes, but the first verse pretty much says, whose report are you going to believe? I mean, it starts starts hitting you right right between the eyes. Whose report are you going to believe? Amen. Are you going to believe the report of what your body's saying to you? Have you noticed that pain has a voice? Have you noticed it has a loud voice? Are you going to believe pain's report? Well, Brother Chris, it's very real. Yes, it is very real. You need to call it a fact. It is a fact. But facts change. So why don't you believe the report of the truth and the truth override that fact? But it's up to you. You've got to embrace the fight. Amen? Amen? You have to embrace the fight. All for His glory. That's what fires me up. God, I don't like this pain in my body. You know that. Of course He knows that. Mm -hmm. And He's my Father. He wants me to be pain free. Amen? Amen. But I'm going to Him when I'm getting attacked. I'm going to Him in this position that I'm going to bring glory to you in this body and the devil's not getting any honor in this body at all and I come against this mess right now in the name of Jesus. Man, it just fires me up when I say that. Yes, I'm I'm going there because I recognize the pain, but I'm going there because the devil's trying to rob my father of his honor. That's strong right there. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Surely He has borne our griefs. Hebrew says diseases. 
and carried our sorrows. The Hebrew says pains. <laughs> That's right there is enough to be shouting over. Yet we esteemed him stricken as smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement or the punishment of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We have every right to be healed, amen? Amen. It's our rights in Christ to be healed, amen? Amen. Does the devil have a right to make you sick? No, sir, no, ma'am. He has no right to make you sick, to put disease on you, to put pain on you. None of these diseases, none of these pains can be in your body. But you've got to realize something. The devil doesn't walk by the rules, have you noticed? Devil, you're breaking the rules. Does he care? That's why you have to enforce them. You have to enforce the rules. You can't put up with him. He's an outlaw. I'm going to say it again. Oh, what can the devil put on me, Brother Chris? Anything you let him put on you. Verse 4 again, it said, Jesus bore our diseases. Is that so we could bear our diseases? No. It said, Jesus carried our pains. Is that so we could carry our pains? No. It said Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. Is that so we could be wounded? No. It said Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. Is that so we could be bruised? No. It said Jesus was punished for our peace. Is that so we could be punished? No. It said Jesus took stripes. Is that so we could take stripes? So you got to get this in you. He was made poor. Is that so we could be poor? No. He was made sin. Is that so sin could rule us? No. <laughs> he was judged. Is that so we can be judged? No. You hear this message enough, you're going to get fired up. Amen. You're going to flat out get fired up. Well, you know, I... I I did this, I deserve it. No, you don't. You're you're accepting judgment. Jesus took it. You're under grace. Everybody look up here. You're under grace. You're not under the law. No matter how bad you mess up, you pull out your first John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when you use 1 John 1, 9, don't say, Oh God, I screwed up again. Can you find in your heart some way to forgive me? Hush! (laughs) Thank you, Robin. (laughs) You don't do that. Don't ask Him to, to find some way in His heart to forgive you. He's not going to forgive you again. You're going to take the forgiveness again. It's totally different than what religion teaches. He's not telling you to ask for Him to forgive you. He's telling you, take it again. Get lined up again. And He forgives you and cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Where are you at then? Righteous? Boy, that's good. He took all this so we don't have to take any of it. What is the gospel? It's the good news about how He took our place and paid for our sin so we could be in His place and be blessed. We don't have to have any curse in our life. Why? Because Jesus took it So we don't have to take it. 
But all this sounds great and sounds exciting, but I gotta I gotta let you in on on some negative news. It's not automatic. <laughs> You must fight in faith to hold tightly to it. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto you being called and have confessed a good confession before many witnesses. Lay hold on eternal life. What is eternal life? That's the blessing now and later. That's heaven now and later. How do I hold tightly to it? With that good confession. You feel pain in your body, and you say, oh, I'm so sick and tired of this. Does that sound like a good confession, Lois? Thank you, thank you. Line your mouth up. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Which one you want? The words you're saying, who or what is... Speaking that to you. Pain has a loud voice. Have you noticed? You gotta get that mouth lined up. Remember 2 Corinthians 4.13. We have the same spirit of the saints of old. We believe, therefore we speak. You gotta speak up. Amen. I'm not taking it. Do you do this, Brother Chris? Uh Seven days a week. I'm not taking it. I don't care how long I'm on this planet before I go home. I'm going to live healthy. Amen. And I've had some stuff come against me. And guess what? I come against it. Amen. I know my rights. I'm under grace. Amen. I'm not under law. Well, if you mess up, that don't mean I'll be cursed because I'm under grace. The devil don't want you to hear this. He wants you to think that you messed up so you deserve this in your life. No, you just repent and keep going. But it's good. Y'all still in Isaiah 53? Verse 6 and verse 7. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. You know that's talking about us, right? (laughs) And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let me paraphrase right there. The Father has laid on the Son all our sins. What love? What love? He took that for you and me. Did he deserve it? Did he deserve to be beat? No. Did he deserve to, to hang on the cross? No. Did he deserve nails in his hands? No. Did he deserve a sword in his side? Did he des- um, I, the, the crown on your head would have sent me sideways. <laughs> Did he deserve it? No. And that's the physical part. Did he deserve to become sin? Did he deserve to become all sickness and disease? Did he deserve to be forsaken by the Father to become spiritually dead to go to hell? Why did he do that? Because he loves us. He took our place. He took our place. He did all that for you and me. Man, that's that's strong. That's strong. Verse 7. He was oppressed. He didn't deserve that, did he? And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Why didn't he open his mouth? Why did he stay silent? 
Did he open not his mouth so we would take it and be silent? He took our place. He kept his mouth shut so we don't keep our mouth shut. Are you with me? Did he keep his mouth shut so we keep our mouth shut when affliction comes our way? No. Did he keep his mouth shut so we would keep our mouth shut when pain comes our way? No. He took our place so we would be in his place and say enough is enough. He had to take that. He had to be in our place so we could stand our ground and be in his place. You know he could have opened his mouth. He could have on the cross when he was hanging there. He had every right because he had a free will. He could have said, okay, Father, okay, I've had enough. Fry this bunch and get me another group. Let's start again. Could have done it, couldn't he? (laughs) He did all that for us. So, so when we get pain uh, uh, at the house tonight, we just take it? Are, are y'all following what I'm saying here? You know what Psalms 107 2 says? Let the redeemed of the Lord be silent and take it. <laughs> Let the redeemed of the Lord be quiet and put up with it. Not even warm. It said what? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what? Amen. I'm not taking it. It says let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. He set you free from the hand of the enemy. What does that look like or feel like? You have pain? It's the hand of the enemy. You got a bad attitude? It's the hand. <laughs> Don't take it personal, Lois. It's just, you just happened to be in my way when I said it. It's the, it's the, it's the, I'll look at Mark. See, Mark's always looking down. You're always looking at me. It's the hand of the enemy with the bad attitude, Mark. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> You've got to say, I refuse to take what Jesus already took for me. I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. You've got to refuse to give the devil any place. Ephesians 4.27 Neither give place to the devil. Ephesians 4.27 Neither give place to the devil. Why does he have place in my life, Brother Chris? Thank you. You know, if you really said that back to somebody, they probably won't talk to you ever again. (laughs) You know, there's really... There's really no insult like the truth. (laughs) Do you really want to know the truth if you ask me that question? First off, you probably can't handle the truth. (laughs) I'm going to give it to you anyway. Why is there pain in your body? Because you let it happen. Oh, now it ain't that cut and dry. Okay, well, there you go. Now you can confirm it. Once again, you're going to have symptoms. We're not, this is not Christian science. Oh, no, no, that symptom's not real. Oh, no, it is really, really real. It really, really hurts too. We're not denying the symptoms, but we're denying them in our body. We refuse to allow them to be in our body. And it's time to get dogged about it. It's time 
So now put up with nothing the devil's throwing at you. You're the redeemed. Jesus shed His blood to get you in that position. So you could walk this earth free from the curse. All of it. We got to step it up a little bit, amen? amen. Got to get a little stronger at the fight. You got to submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. What if I do that and I wake up the next morning and it's still there? Repeat the process. Thank you, Father, that you healed me 2,000 years ago. Jesus, you shed your blood on the cross for me. I thank you, Lord, for a pain-free body right now. I thank you that I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, for the manifestation of it. And I, and I take my healing based on your word, and I'm not going to base my healing on the manifestation. Because if I base my healing on the manifestation, I'm walking by sight and not by faith. My healing is based in God's Word. I'm healed because Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says, By His stripes I am healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, By His stripes I was healed. Galatians 3, 13 says, I've been redeemed from the curse. Well, what you got in that curse, that don't matter what I got in the curse, I've been redeemed from it. Amen. And stand your ground in faith till you see the manifestation. But if you get caught up in the manifestation, you're going to find out your faith is in sight and not in, not in God's Word. Amen? Amen? It's time to wake up and realize we base our faith on God's Word, period. I don't care what things look like, the situation, circumstances, the health, the finances. I'm basing my faith my faith, my life in the Word of God. My God says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I got all the strength I need down here. My God supplies all my need according to His riches and glory. All my needs will be met. That's Philippians 4.13, Philippians 4.19. But you've got to speak up. He was quiet so we don't have to be. Amen. It's the only reason He was quiet. He was taking all this so we didn't have to. Are y'all getting that? Oh, that's good. That's good. As you speak up, you'll be taking the blessing of the gospel. You'll be saying what God says, and you'll be getting what He gave you.